The centrality of your customer is just one part of the proper mindset required for professional writing. I'm going to share four more with you that are all required to help ensure that you have an attitude that positions you for success. The first of these elements is that professional writing is fundamentally different from academic writing. As I discussed briefly in the introduction video, most people begin their careers armed with skills and knowledge honed to produce success in an academic setting. Their habits started gelling in high school when they learned how to get the grades they needed to get into a good college, and once there, these practices further solidified to tackle the increased rigors of undergraduate classes. Those who, like me, went on to graduate school added an extra layer of experience that reinforced, if not ossified, the cycle of researching and paper writing that yielded success in the form of good grades, the types of grades needed to land great jobs in the private and public sectors. Once such students start their careers, however, they often have a rude awakening, as the skills that got them the job they wanted don't translate quickly into success in that job. This disconnect is largely due to the differences between how academia and the professional world function. Nowhere is this difference greater and more significant than in the approach to writing, the core skill for almost every analyst as well as numerous other professions. I like to use an analogy to illustrate this difference and how it can lead to trouble for new professionals. Academic writing is like a Christmas tree. When writing a paper for your professor, the goal is usually to show them how much you've learned about a particular subject. This tendency gets stronger the higher you go in education. Sure, my PhD dissertation had to offer some new insights, but the purpose of the lengthy literature review section was merely to show readers how much of other people's work I had absorbed. Also, the only readers of my thesis were the members of my dissertation committee, and they had to read it, or at least pretend they had. We're also taught throughout our academic career that a paper's length is directly related to its sophistication, level of difficulty, and overall intellectual value. Teachers assign papers with required minimum lengths, and the more advanced the course or significant the project, the longer the paper. As a result of these two practices, the incentive structure of academic writing becomes to cram as much into your paper as you can. More is always more. Another way to think of this is my Christmas tree analogy. I'm going to hang every shiny bauble I can on this paper to make it as weighty and wonderful as possible, because more is better. As a result, the reader might have trouble even seeing the tree because I've buried it under so much unnecessary decoration, yet because I'm demonstrating just how much I know and my professor has to read it no matter what I do, my paper succeeds, and so do I. The good grades you get from these papers then help you land your dream job, in my case a military analyst at the CIA, where I diligently and unfortunately continued at first to produce Christmas trees. Contrast this approach with what I said in the previous lecture about your need as a professional to be as concise and clear for your customers as possible. Every extra ornament, string of lights, and handful of tinsel you throw into your product makes it that much less likely that your customer will read your product, and more likely that they'll get confused if they do. Professional writing is nothing like a Christmas tree. Professional writing is like a bonsai tree. The bonsai tree is carefully pruned to present a very purposeful, specific shape to the viewer, one that captures the essence of the tree with no unnecessary elements and certainly no ornaments. Similarly, effective professional writing is carefully edited down to present the reader with the essence of the topic at hand, providing exactly what is needed for comprehension, nothing more and nothing less. The purpose of professional writing is not to show how smart you are or how much you've learned about a subject, and you don't have to fill space to meet some arbitrary minimum length. The goal is to answer someone's question as concisely as possible. You might have to research and produce chunks of data as large as you did in school to produce your analysis, but the vast majority of that information doesn't go to the customer. Instead, you prune it carefully and deliver only what they need to see. Becoming a successful professional writer therefore requires discarding the academic mindset most of us bring into our careers and replacing it with the new mantra that less is more in professional writing. This took me a long time to learn when I started at the CIA, in part because the last thing I wrote before joining was my dissertation, where I never passed up an opportunity to hang a few more ornaments on my magnificent Christmas tree. Suddenly being in an environment where I might only have a half page to tell my story was a rough transition. 
One reason why these styles of writing are so different is that academic and analytic writing have different triggers. It's a safe bet that whenever you wrote a paper in school at any level, the trigger was always what I refer to as a pull. You produced work because the teacher assigned it, effectively pulling it out of you. I'm willing to bet that you never wrote unassigned papers for your teachers. You were given an assignment and you did it. You never generated your own assignments. As part of this pull system, you were guaranteed that your teacher, the customer for your work, expected your paper and would read it and give you feedback in the form of a grade. You also knew that they would read your paper regardless of how long it was. They might not enjoy it, as the moods of most of my friends who are now professors suggest as they plow through their students' papers, but they still have to pay attention to it. In other words, you were always guaranteed of meeting the first and biggest customer challenge, that they read your stuff. To be fair, the pull factor is absolutely part of professional writing, as customers will sometimes request a specific paper or have standing requirements you need to meet. In such cases, the odds that the customer will pay attention to your product are pretty high, although they will have limited patience with you taking up more of their time than absolutely necessary. So yes, there is a pull factor to professional writing, but unlike academic work, there's also a very strong push factor. With this trigger, you recognize something you think should be of interest to your customer, so you write a report and push your analysis to them. The challenge here is that since they haven't requested this product, and might not be expecting anything from you, there's no guarantee they'll actually pay attention to it. If they do decide to look at it, they might quickly be turned off by its length and decide to pass on investing any of their valuable time in your unrequested insights. During my time in the US intelligence community, the balance between push and pull was heavily skewed towards push factors. About 75% of the time when my analysts created a product, they were trying to flag something we thought was important to our customers in a product that they had not requested. The other 25% of the time we answered specific questions from our customers. I've seen this mix of push and pull very widely in the private sector, but I haven't seen the 100% pull environment of academia replicated anywhere in a professional setting. One of the challenges that an environment dominated by push triggers creates for writing is that the impetus for production usually lies with the writer and not the customer. In school, your teacher assigned a paper and you wrote it, usually with some reluctance. The problem is that reluctance to write in a professional setting sometimes translates into an avoidance of doing so. It can be tempting to fall into the mindset that, yeah, writing is kind of a pain, maybe I'll just keep researching or thinking instead. That is not the proper mindset. Never lose sight of the fact that you are paid to produce. The professional part of writing indicates that someone is paying you for it. They aren't paying you to have big thoughts or brilliant insights that you keep to yourself. They expect you to share them in writing. This means your default setting should be that whenever you have the opportunity to provide something your customers would find relevant and helpful, whenever you can tell them something they need or want to know that they don't know yet, you do it. Why am I bothering to say something so obvious? Because writing is hard, and in many organizations, the process required to get a finished product out the door is painful. As a result, many people whose job it is to write are reluctant to actually do so. Compounding this problem is the temptation that many analysts have to wait until they have all of the information before they make an analytic call, which threatens the timeliness and relevance of their ultimate product. I've included placing a premium on production as part of the proper mindset for professional writing because of my experience as a manager of analysts at the CIA. We had an exceptionally painful multi-layered editorial process that analysts had to navigate, which made some of them very reluctant to write unless I pushed, pressured, or forced them. The analysts that endeared themselves to me the most, and that tended to get promoted the fastest, were the ones always on the lookout for the next story to write up and who kept up a steady flow of products. So adopt the mindset that you will write whenever you have something that meets the threshold of your customer's interest and that you'll aggressively seek such opportunities. Not only will you serve your customer's needs better, you'll also make your management chain happier because thanks to you, their unit will be pushing out more product, the metric their bosses use to judge their level of success. Even better, the more you write professional content, the better you'll get at doing it. A virtuous circle if ever there was one. Next, I'll cover the final element of what I see as the proper mindset for professional writing, one that also comes from my experiences at CIA. 
As someone who's been editing other people's work for over 20 years and who works every day to become a better writer, this one is near and dear to my heart. The small stuff matters.